Hi there, my name is Joseph Fink, and I will be reading today from The Halloween Moon, which is my new middle grade novel that is about Halloween and all of the excitement and spooky feelings that go with that. Uh, I think the reading I'm doing introduces the book better than I could do just off the top of my head, so I'm going to start reading. Esther Gold loved Halloween. Maybe you love Halloween. Maybe you dress up every year and put a lot of time and care into your costume. Maybe you watch scary movies and then can't sleep, but also can't resist watching more. Maybe candy corn tastes better to you than other candy, not because it tastes better, it doesn't, but because it tastes like a moment in time, like a season. But you don't love Halloween the way Esther did. Esther refused to watch anything that wasn't a scary movie. Her dad liked to watch sitcoms. Her mom liked to watch important dramas starring important people. Her brother liked to watch movies in which people kissed, although he pretended he didn't. But Esther only liked movies with darkness and Dutch angles and the part where the main character leans down to the sink to wash their face. And then when they look up again, there is a pale menacing creature behind them in the mirror. Esther made three different costumes every Halloween. One was for school, one was for trick-or-treating, and one was in case the other two didn't turn out as well as she had hoped. She put more time into her backup costume than most people put into any costume they would ever wear. Esther didn't even like candy, but she collected as much as she possibly could for the sheer act of collecting it. She would eat some of it, sure, it was fine, but mostly the contents of her overflowing bag went to friends, and to her brother, or sometimes to the trash, if her parents discovered how much candy she had managed to collect. Unhealthy, her father often said. He was right. Greedy, her mother often said. She was wrong. Esther wasn't greedy about the candy. She didn't collect it merely to have it. She collected it because it was part of the ritual of Halloween, and more than anything, she loved this annual night when everyone gave up on being realistic and clear-headed and being too old for scary stories and just let themselves pretend a little. This is what Halloween was to Esther. It was a night in which the whole neighborhood came together to tell a story. And above all, Esther loved stories. Yes, Esther Gold loved Halloween. But one year, Halloween was not a holiday about getting together to pretend a scary story. One year, the scary story became real. Chapter 2 Esther had always been the only Jewish kid in her grade. This had not usually mattered to her. Being Jewish wasn't that big a deal anymore, she would tell herself. But also it mattered a lot. It was both important and unimportant at the same time. If she had been asked to explain this, she wouldn't have been able to, but she felt it. When she was eight, she and all the other kids she had grown up with had moved to a new school. They were leaving the school for the little kids and going to the school where they would be staying through junior high. It was a defining moment as far as such terms apply in towns where not a lot ever happens. The first day of school had been on Yom Kippur. No one who set the calendar for the school district knew they had scheduled it this way. They didn't know what Yom Kippur was. As the other kids got to know their new school, Esther spent the day in her synagogue, which was a 30-minute drive from the town she lived in. When she arrived on the second day of school, everyone else knew where the bathrooms were, where to go for recess and lunch, and all of the new rules that, that had been explained to them. And all of the new rules that had been explained to them while she was at synagogue, it felt like vertigo. Her hands shook, and she couldn't make them stop. The teachers did their best to help her out, but none of them were very sympathetic. None of them could understand why she didn't just show up to the first day of school. Her grandmother had been the one who taught Esther to love her Jewish identity, to be proud of it even if perhaps people treated her worse because of it. Her grandmother's name was Debbie, and Esther parent, Esther's parents would have named her after Debbie, except that Jewish people don't name children after people who are still alive, so Esther had been named after her great-grandmother instead. It was Debbie who had first introduced Esther to a love of Halloween. Esther's parents didn't get it, but Debbie would have Esther over when she was little, take her trick-or-treating, and show her spooky movies, probably a touch too old for her at the time. Now Esther was 13. Her bat mitzvah had been four months earlier. It was Halloween-themed, of course, even though it was in, even though it was in June. 
which the kids at her synagogue would have found incredibly dorky if she had invited even a single one of them. They were all from the same town, which wasn't her town, and so it felt like all of them were already friends with each other. There had never been room for her to join their close-knit cliques, and so while they invited each other to their bar and bat mitzvah parties, she only invited her family and a few non-Jewish friends from school. It was okay. The party ruled. She had a magician perform. She loved magicians for the same reason she loved Halloween. They told a story that promised a world more interesting than the world she had to live in. Grandma Debbie had loved it. The rest of the adults were less sure. You know, her dad had said at the party, looking over the paper cut out bats and ghosts on the wall. This means you're an adult now, and adults don't go trick-or-treating. She had ignored that, and it hadn't come up again since. She knew that eventually there would come a last year she could go door to door, walking past a few plastic pumpkins scattered half-heartedly on a lawn, or past elaborate front yard displays full of fake body parts and light-up ghosts. There would come a last year she would feel that moment of anticipation and apprehension as she knocked on a stranger's door and waited to see who would answer. There would come a last year for the satisfying weight of a full bag of candy after a round of trick-or-treating. But this was not that year. Next year, maybe. Or the year after. Or the year after that.